Are you, like everyone else, tired of living on Earth? Maybe it's time to move to a different realm. A more magical realm. A more the gathering ical realm. It will still probably have every problem that Earth does, but maybe you'll get to ride a dragon. That's gotta be worth something, right? There are a lot of planes in magic though, so how do you decide which one to move to? Well, what if some internet genius was to rank all of them based on livability? Well, fortunately, I am that madman. I mean, genius. One by one, I've gone through all of Magic's planes and scored them on a complex index of five components of livability. I then gave each plane a total score based off of those individual scores, which I used to determine my rankings. The index components are as followed. One, safety. This is the most important factor. If I spend any amount of time on this plane, am I in perpetual danger of a terrible death? Two, opportunity. Does this plane have a quality and affordability? Will I be able to live there without becoming some kind of surf or offering? 3. Development. Through either magic or technology, will this plane provide an acceptable standard of living? 4. Things to do. Does this plane have fun activities? Is there a strong local culture? 5. Pet friendliness. Are there natural areas to walk my dog, Emmy? Is my cat Luna likely to be eaten? With all that out of the way, let's begin. First off, Wrath and original recipe Phyrexia, respectively, were destroyed, and are thus very difficult to move to. Like returning to a state of childhood innocence after growing up, there are some places you just can't go back to. I probably don't need to tell you that the Xenomorph Cyberman hellscape of New Phyrexia wouldn't be a good place to live. Everything on the plane wants to assimilate you, eat you, or both. Plus, the metal grass grows quickly enough to impale you. It's just the worst in every way imaginable. Ogratha is the cosmic dumping ground of the multiverse. It seems like every day a new planeswalker or monster ends up there with plans of bloody conquest. Now it's just a plane full of vampire overlords and life draining dead zones. Also, Homelands is the worst nickname for someone's homelands that I've ever heard. Mercadia straight up sucks. 1. It looks like a dumb top. 2. A guild of professional assassins, thieves, and horrors roam the streets. I don't know what a professional horror is, but I don't want to find out. 3. Opportunity is super low in this classist hell of hedonistic, apathetic, and lazy nobles and selfish, grasping, and paranoid commoners. 4. I can either keep my pets in an overcrowded, natureless city, or wilderness full of whatever these things are. No thank you. At the end of the Lower Wind Shadowmoor block, the two aspects of the plane fused. We don't really know which elements of each aspect now exist, but fortunately, that's not really an issue for us, because both Lower Wind and Shadowmoor would be terrible places to live. Everyone is so, so racist. Just unbelievably racist. Opportunity is obviously super low because everything is tribal and hierarchical, and your pet is only safe if you hang out with the most racist people on this racist plane. As the big monster plane, Ikori is at an obvious safety disadvantage. The most secure locations on the plane, the cities, still have to deal with frequent monster attacks. In general, Ikoria just seems like an unpleasant place to live, as development and things to do are minimal. You might think that pet friendliness is high, but I argue that that is not the case, as liking your pet too much is a crime punishable by exile. Ragatha has exactly one thing going for it, fire. If you can't wield fire, or at least live in a world virtually made of it, you're not going to have a good time. Opportunity is varied, as the plane is split between Carol Keep, who are devoted to freedom, and the Order of Helud, who seek to instill their version of justice. But again, just too much fire. As I said in my Tarkir Inspirations video, I love the plane of Tarkir. That doesn't mean I would want to live there. The odds of being enslaved by a dragon, or eaten by a dragon, or enslaved by and then eaten by a dragon are just too high. And even if you do manage to find success, some nerd might travel back in time and undo it all. Allow me to get controversial here. Kamigawa is a bad plane, or at the very least, it would be a bad place to live. As Kamigawa block takes place in the distant past, it's difficult to say what the plane's like now. However, we know that the plane is defenseless enough that the Infinite Consortium was able to burn her village to the ground fairly recently. It doesn't sound like too much has changed since the days of the Kami War. Finally, opportunity is quite low due to the plane's religious hierarchy and aristocracy. Innistrad is another monster plane, in this case, classical horror monsters. It has many of the same livability issues as Ikoria, but scores slightly better because technology is slightly more advanced. However, the ward just seems miserable and dreary. Maybe I should have included a metric for, will contribute to my depression. The only thing that Varen has going for it is big rings, and even those are in poor condition. 
It's the planar equivalent of a sad little town whose only feature of significance is a rundown statue or something that everyone there is unreasonably proud of. Just a grungy, gray world. And the Sphinxes look really creepy here. Chandelar is a difficult plane to judge. By design, it was envisioned as a generic fantasy world. Although that said, the plane seems to have a lot of weird, dangerous monsters and animals. Also, the whole over-massacre ghost situation is a bit of a buzzkill. The meditation realm is safe, but at what cost? The cost of living on the most boring plane imaginable, the worst roommates in the multiverse. Ujin talks a big game about responsibility, but when it's his weekend to clean the bathroom, you just know he'll be conveniently on Tarkir doing important business. Are you going to tell me that Bolas would respect if you put your name on your leftovers? Alara is a complex plane due to the fairly recent Conflex event bringing together five formally separated, highly distinct shards. Unfortunately for our search for livable locations, each area of Alara has unique drawbacks. For example, Esper and Bant have good safety scores but score poorly in Opportunity, as life on Esper is highly controlled while Bant has a strict caste system. Meanwhile, Grixis would be a truly terrible place to call home due to a lack of safety. Finally, Naya and Jund lose out on the development factor. Overall, Alara averages out to a pretty middling to low score. Long ago, Arabia was split into a thousand and one originally identical copies, which would make finding your apartment really difficult. Beyond that, the plane has strong culture, but many of its locations are just directly translated real world ones, and the whole point of this dumb thought experiment is to leave the stupid planet. Theros seems pretty chill in some ways, but living on a plane where reality is determined by a combination of the faith of randos and the whims of jerk gods would get frustrating really quickly. Stay in a palace though and you'll probably be pretty safe. Eldraine is a medieval world of knights and magic. The wilds are dangerous, but life within the realm is quite secure, meaning a high safety score. However, the plane has a low opportunity score for various reasons. Throne of Eldraine introduced two new creature types solely to distinguish who's rich and who's poor. Additionally, rake advancement is dictated less by skill and more by the judgment of a random forest monster or an inanimate object. There's a fair amount to do though with books, tournaments, and hunts shown to exist. The plane of Ixalan is split into two continents, Ixalan and Turazon. Since the continent of Ixalan is a location of note so far, I'll focus on it. There's some safety to be found, but it depends mostly on how far you venture into the jungle. Pet friendliness is high, since both the Sun Empire and the Brazen Coalition seem big on humanoid slash animal bonds. It could be annoying to have your fate depend on the results of an internet poll though. Fior is a renaissance age plane of intrigue and deception. Your safety and opportunity depend entirely on how ambitious you are. The higher you reach for, the more likely you are to be stabbed in the back, figuratively or literally. Pet friendliness is quite high though, because if a pet hydra is allowed, I'd assume anything is. Ravnica has great development and the most diversity of entertainment options in the multiverse. However, the oppressive forces of the Azorius, Boros, and Orzhov keep opportunity down. And let's see, every single guild has the potential to endanger you. Plus, if I want to walk the dog, my only real options are the Anarchy Ruins or the Cult Farms, which is not great. Amonkhet is actually better as a place to live than one might initially think. Following the Hour of Devastation Calamity, all seemed lost, but the people of Amonkhet have since rebuilt society, somewhat. A new Hekma means I could live in relative safety. Additionally, my pets would love it here. Luna would be worshipped as a god, and Amy can hang out with the jackal people. Bavlovia is a highly chaotic plane within the Universe. Safety is an obvious concern, with the MTG wiki describing Bavlovia's status as constant under threat. Sick. Is sick supposed to be said aloud? Leave a comment with your take. However, this chaos allows for good social mobility, and the plane's science focus means that development is at its best in magic. Zendikar is a high-risk, high-reward plane. Dangers abound, but opportunity is everywhere if you're willing to look for it. Additionally, the Eldrazi incident proved the plane's people can cooperate towards a common goal and that regrowth is possible. The plane of mountains and seas is a lesser-known plane, but deserves to be on everyone's top destination lists. It's one of the safest planes around. Conflict isn't an issue, and now even natural disasters are being taken care of by planeswalkers. Plus, pet friendliness is clearly quite high. Dominaria is too big both in general and in terms of trying to determine the planar average of livability. Therefore, I'm going to look at the best, most prominent locations of the plane. Safety-wise, Dominaria is actually doing surprisingly well. While Dominaria has dealt with minor issues like apocalypses that endanger the very fabric of the universe in the past, centuries of Urzalus recovery time have led to relative peace across the land. In our most recent visit, the conflicts were fairly minor compared to the world-endangering threats that we often see in Magic. Opportunity is mixed, depending on the location. Nations like New Benalia have a strict social system, but some areas afford more personal liberty. 
Development is quite high, in part to the advancements of the Tolarian Academies. They ventured more towards useful areas of science like agriculture and aquaculture, as opposed to weapons of mass destruction, and that war that I'm not going to say because we'll get this video demonetized. But we all know what it is. Whenever the topic of Nisus Plains is discussed, Kaladesh always comes up. And for good reason. It's very technologically advanced, with lots to do for fun, and a lack of any major safety threats. Robotic pets seem more common than living ones, but those are still fairly common, and accepted. The only factor that Kaladesh really loses points on is opportunity. While things have changed since the revolt, we don't have much evidence yet to say for certain that they've changed enough. So that's it, right? Kaladesh is clearly the best place in Magic to live. Nope! There's one place that's even better, and you are a fool for not realizing that. A fool! The most livable plane in the entire multiverse is... Kylum. Kylum does well in every factor in the Index. The plane is so free of natural conflict that society comes together for fun make-believe ones. Opportunity is high because all skills can be used in safe, non-lethal combat in the arena. Do you want to do battle? No problem. Apply your skills elsewhere and make your money that way. Kylum may not seem well developed initially, but look at that level of environmental control that Valor's Reach has. And no plane in Magic is more fun than Kylum. The entire plane is structured around entertainment. Finally, pets are readily accepted, and if you want to take yours to a natural area, Kylum's got those too. Truly, there is no better place to call home in all of Magic than Kylum. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to support future content. Comment your favorite plane below and I promise to tell you that you're wrong, even if you agree with me. I like to keep you all on your toes. 